thunder and lightning suggest something ominous cliche. In this case, the movie itself. Two and a half minutes of aerial ice credits. Oh man, they dragged three actors I really love into this, didn't they? This asshole barely made it over in the first place. Now he suddenly can jump farther, even with more weight? Jack had no ice pick in his hands when he went over the ledge. Are we supposed to believe that after he fell, he was able to grab it from his coat, swing it into the ice, and save himself all in one motion? When do you think this could happen, Professor? When? I don't know, maybe in a hundred years, maybe in a thousand. Which, according to the Book of Scientific Estimations, in a Roland Emmerich film means ten minutes. But what I do know is that if we do not act soon, it is our children and our grandchildren who will have to pay the price. But you just said you didn't know when it would happen. Now you're certain it's going to happen within two generations? Well, the last chunk of ice that broke off was about the size of the state of Rhode Island. <laughs> That's the smallest state in the U.S. That's 1,214 measly square miles. When it's the size of Texas, get back to me, Professor. I'm here at the Global Warming Conference in New Delhi, where if you can believe your eyes, it's snowing. Extremely strange weather projected to happen a long time from now just happens to be taking place during the freaking Global Warming Conference. The name's Rapson. Terry Rapson. Professor Rapson? All good scientists in movies have heard of every scientist that ever approaches them, has read their work, and remember their f***ing names. Absolutely. We can hail a cab. In India. With thousands of people hailing cabs and making noise in a blizzard, the ability to whistle is not an asset. Guy at the important science research place is sleeping on the job cliche. Soccer. Oh, wait, we're in Scotland, aren't we? So that sin should be football. Also, Manchester United. This guy just happens to witness the only goal ever scored in this sport ever. Where is 4311? Oh, it's, uh... The location was on that very screen when you started hitting buttons, but helpful map of the United States gives the audience a good idea where it is, I guess. Kick the ball. Come on. 23 of them in the Come on, kick it. Do true football fans sit in front of the TV and demand players to kick the ball? That's all they f***ing do. That'll teach you for saying things. Excuse me, I'm not the one who's away for months and months at a time. Awesome at his job, terrible at being a dad cliche. Please don't be late, I don't want him to have to take a taxi again. Alright, okay, I'll be there. Which inevitably means, no, he won't be there, because he sucks. Why, for the love of God, would you aggravate the vice president? Because my 17-year-old kid knows more science than he does. Perhaps, but your 17-year-old kid does not control our budget. It Neither does the vice president. Jack's 17-year-old son probably has as much sway as that guy does when it comes to the budgets of government programs. What I'm trying to tell you- Oh, did you forget something, Sam? Like, your son? Jeez, all fathers are just terrible, aren't they? I got every question right on the final, and the only reason why Mr. Spangler failed me was because I didn't write out the solutions. Come on, four things wrong with this scenario. First, like it takes any time whatsoever to write out your work on a test, even calculus. Secondly, it's amazing that the teacher didn't give you a chance to write out your work to prove that you could do it. Third, it's also amazing that a straight-A student like you wouldn't get the benefit of the doubt. And finally, how long have you been taking this class? You don't know the rules by now? Oh, sure, I ask for a second glass of wine and get the 12-step shame look, but this kid is given 32 packets of peanuts like it's no big deal. Also, Emmy Rossum is of an indeterminate age to be my girlfriend in this scene. I'm gonna guess 17, but Jake Gyllenhaal is probably 23, so he can't have her either. The chance of a plane going down because of turbulence is less than what? One in a billion? I can't remember if it's shut a up, Yeah, shut up, only black guy I know. Can I have my hand back? Nope. Just because the turbulence is over, no one on the plane freaks out about these masks dropping? Movie really rips off Armageddon and thinks we won't notice. Excuse me, sir. We're really late. I don't understand the mentality. This is what the traffic looks like. Where do you think he can go? This is what you get for stealing scenes from Speed and arguably being the best thing about showgirls. You get the day after tomorrow. Birds fly away to signify danger cliche. Animals are always the first to know, aren't they? I think it's because of the consumerism. Montezuma was in Mexico, not Peru. Academic bull. I bet he's really rich too. Shut up. Yeah, shut up, only black guy I know. One of our nomad boys registered a 13 degree drop surface temperature the other day. I've uh, sent you an email. Despite the fact that he's an amazing scientist who keeps up with everything, he's somehow missed an email from another important scientist. And if this happened the other day, why didn't Rapson call him then? Movie rips off the wind to indicate something ominous thing from Twister. Should you be monitoring the weather or something? This is LA. What weather? I don't blame you for trying to ignore everything to get laid, but dude, they've been talking about this hurricane for days. All the way back in this scene, when we found out Jack was a bad father. Yeah, let's just fly a helicopter in the middle of three tornadoes. That's something I would do if I were getting that sweet chopper reporter money. Dickhead newly formed LA tornado immediately starts taking out iconic landmarks. Okay, this footage is coming from a camera, presumably handheld, inside a helicopter that is literally like 50 yards away. How is the image this stable? And there are people down there taking pictures. People. 
areas. Chip, where are you? Yep, cell phones are still working fine during apocalyptic multi-tornado storms from hell. We are going live to downtown Los Angeles right now. Uh, Tommy? If you look- This motherfucker was literally just by LAX. And not only is that too far away from downtown LA for him to be there now, he was also dodging flying cars and other debris like a soon-to-be-dead man. First, the weather guy on the street driving the Porsche, then the newscaster, then this guy back at the weather office who was talking to the Porsche guy on the phone. Movie keeps killing everyone it introduces. Mr. President, Los Angeles has been devastated by a series of tornadoes. I am somehow the first person telling you of this news. Came too late for two planes that were brought down by severe turbulence. So much for one in a billion. Yeah, shut up, only black guy I know. Give me the mainframe and let me prove it. No. You have 48 hours. Well, Jack did make a convincing point with that frustrated face. Here's where we truly get into Emmerichville. There are some major catastrophes happening. We need to care about all the people, like in the world, or else this movie that I paid 2004 movie ticket prices to see terribly wicked mass destruction would feel a bit hollow. Also, how many other disaster movies have a main female character that is a doctor or a nurse at a hospital? I bet it's easily over 65%. Six to eight months, that can't be. Because it's a lot shorter than you think, probably. Take it, Janet. That time scale isn't in months, it's in weeks. You better be sure about this, Jack. My ass is on the line. You saw the model, and I hope to God it's wrong. You just said that you hoped he was right because your ass is on the line, remember? It was found perfectly preserved in the Siberian tundra. Stupid kids who bogged this movie down managed to provide some over-the-top foreshadowing. Bloody fuel lines are starting to freeze. Yep, I thought it was about time for the random people in helicopters get caught up in a storm and crash cliche. It's my dad's place and he's kind of never around, so. So he's just like all dads then, according to this director's point of view. The wolves, they're gone. Oh no, the wolves, they'll probably only show up again once it's convenient for the plot. Inaccessible. The way this asshole talks. We should just go back to your apartment. Yeah, I vote for that. What, are you kidding? Get me in higher. Up to the library. Why is rich preppy dude's penthouse apartment not high enough? You were all groaning about taking the stairs, so I can only assume it was pretty high up, right? Why would a library have more floors than a rich person's apartment building anyway? I am confused. I don't speak French! Well, luckily, I speak French. This is basically Independence Day revisited. Only the aliens are now huge tidal waves. The problem! You have to bag in the cab, their passport! Overly altruistic girl who heard people in need of help speaking French in this commotion and then went back to help is now going back yet again to fetch a freaking purse. Now, see, this library only looks to be five or six stories tall, while all these surrounding buildings, many of which have penthouse apartments on the top floor, are five times as tall. Why the f did they come here? And do we know their projected path? Yes. Our previous estimates of six to eight weeks weren't even close. And in seven to ten days. Actually, strike that. It'll be six to eight minutes. Wait, six to eight seconds. No, scratch that. We're f***ing dead. I am now communicating to you in the spirit world. Jack. Something's happened in New York. Is that what the vague bastard on the other end of the line said? Or are you being a vague bastard for dramatic purposes? Oh, sure. Now all circuits are busy. Listen, thanks for coming back for me. It was really brave. Yeah, well, it's a good thing you look like Emmy Rossum, or you'd have died. Also, your makeup looks incredible, by the way, for someone who was just out in all that rain for so damn long. Sam, just tell her how you feel. Supposed preppy girlfriend stealing jerk becomes sudden best buddy. Did you reach your little brother yet? No, there's still no service. Damn cell phones. Yeah, they're so unreliable during ice ages. Older payphones draw their power directly from the telephone line. Okay, but didn't New York get flooded by huge tidal waves that likely knocked power lines and telephone lines down? Massive flooding accounts for something, doesn't it? And how is the phone drawing power from anywhere without shorting out or giving him a shock in all this water? It's still electricity, right? Movie spends an awful lot of time trying to make us think Sam didn't survive this. Let's find some dry clothes for you. In the library. While I'd love to give the movie points for the clever library lost and found as the source for dry clothes, I can't, because no lost and found would have this many clothes in it. And besides, who takes off their pants or shirt at the f***ing library and then forgets about it? I'm using my body heat to warm you. Luckiest hypothermia ever. If we let the blood from your arms and legs rush back to your heart too quickly. Well, don't worry about that because most of the blood is in his penis right now. Okay, this is where these f***ers are. And I'm calling 100% bullshit on any boat, let alone a boat this f***ing big managing to make its way here through the water streets without smashing into a building and getting stuck. How did it even get through the obviously narrower street it appears to have just come through? Evacuate. Everyone south of that line. Even if that's the most scientific answer, that's f***ing ludicrous and impossible. And I'm not sure how this smart professor thinks this would be remotely possible. Their best chance is to stay inside, uh, try to ride it out, pray. But after the storm, didn't you say it was going to be an ice age? Will the staying inside and praying still help then? Give the order for the National Guard to evacuate the southern states. The f*** are we going to tell them to go? Mexico? Should we tell Mexico to expect 150 million people in the next 12 hours?
And won't that create a bottleneck at the border? Gentlemen, to England. Yep, too bad you weren't American scientists. You could have survived this. You'll kill an Indian guy much the same way in 2012. You know, we already did 2012, but it's amazing how much Emmerich copied himself note for note with that movie. We haven't been able to reach Peter's parents. Oh no, not Peter. That kid was more important than everyone else at this hospital. If you were going to get into a truck anyway, what was all that bullshit earlier about you walking the whole distance? You can't make it to New York, Jack. I've walked that far before in the snow. Just half an hour ago, Mexican officials closed the border in the light of so many U.S. refugees who are fleeing south. Irony. And now, in a dramatic reversal of illegal immigration. Oh my god, he did not just say that out loud. Also, once the president gave the go-ahead for the southern states to evacuate, why didn't he speak with the Mexican president to make sure it was okay? You can't hope to displace millions of people and expect them all to go... What were the choices? Texas. Parts of Florida that aren't flooded. Mexico. I mean, you need Mexico in this scenario. You can't burn books. No. Dean Koontz, L. Ron Hubbard, Dan Brown, Sidney Sheldon. Those kind of books are pretty much expendable. And hey, I don't hate Stephen King, but you could throw Firestarter in there just for the irony. Well, we're not going to last very long on M&Ms and potato chips. What about the garbage cans? It's only something to eat in the garbage. Ha ha, he's homeless. This is only possible because the president was able to negotiate a deal to forgive all Latin American debt. Mexico offered a deal if the United States forgave all Latin American debt? You realize that Latin America encompasses way more than Mexico, right? How does Mexico speak for every Latin American country? This raises way more questions than it answers. Was there only one patient in the entire hospital whose family couldn't get there to pick him up? And she's the only nurse, doctor, whatever, staying behind in the entire hospital? A Gutenberg Bible. It was in the rare books room. I think God's gonna save you. Couldn't this dialogue have gone to the main actors in the movie? Or even better, not written at all? Yeah, and how do you know? Books can be good for something other than burning. Oh, f*** you. You make it sound like everyone in this room was part of Fahrenheit 451's book-burning gang. As if it wasn't done for survival, but because it was a pleasure to burn. Septicemia. She could go into septic shock. I've seen that before. That can get bad. Thanks, Dr. Homeless Guy. She needs a massive dose of penicillin or a broad-spectrum antibiotic immediately. Or... Or what? She turns into a zombie and one of you will have to figure out who kills her. Because she won't be Laura anymore. You got me? Door to a frozen ass ship in the middle of an historic new ice age opens like it's nothing. We had a piddling ice storm a couple weeks ago and I couldn't even get my car door open. Oh no, the wolves! They only came at the most convenient moment for the plot. Also, a movie expects me to remember something that happened 45 minutes ago in movie time. If it weren't for the fact that I'm a smartass and took note of the wolves, I would have completely forgotten and been like, What? Wolves? Are you f***ing kidding me? Movie somehow simultaneously rips off Under Siege and inspires the Grey all in one fell swoop. Hey, hey, hey guys, I found it. How do you know? Yeah, shut the f*** up, only but Oh, you found it? Good job. We should find some food while we're here. But we don't have time. Why don't one of you go deliver the penicillin and the other two get food? It's not like you need each other to walk to the library and you don't know about the wolves yet. This wolf broke off from the pack somehow, didn't attract any of the other wolves during this commotion, and now the heroes are safe, goddammit. It should be over New York by now. Satellite readings are showing a temperature drop of 10 degrees per second. I know they mean the eye of the storm, but 10 degrees per second? Doesn't that mean that it's getting cold at an extremely rapid rate even if you're not in the eye? At that rate, anywhere near the eye, the temperature should be dropping at a speed that would kill anyone who even looked outside, including our heroes in the ship. We gotta get back right now. It's 10 below. No, 20. I mean, damn. It's 30 below. It's 40 below. Let's run already. All right, I beat the wolves. It's only negative 1200 degrees, and now he's frozen. Oh my god. I just realized this movie is tolerable if you view it as a prequel to Snowpiercer. Can I interest you in a frosty? Jack is a dick to his unconscious fellow scientist. Movie is literally trying to create tension through a race against cold. Close the door! Because cold is notorious for being unable to penetrate doors. Also, look, they're in a room with windows. Are you telling me that the insane cold can't make it through glass? Shit, that stuff should be breaking right now. Does the cold only follow the paths laid out by the library? Staten Island. What do you think's gonna happen to us? What do you mean? I mean, us. Civilization. Of course you did. It was so clear by how you phrased the question. How are you alive right now? Sure, you're in a tent, but shit. Don't you need massive amounts of fire and heat for seven to ten days like the movie said earlier? How are you not cliche sickles at this point? I mean, if the movie even tried to explain how the freezing temperatures and death conditions worked, even once, I might not have so many questions here at the end. Mankind survived the last ice age. We're certainly capable of surviving this one. All depends on whether or not we're able to learn from our mistakes. After what you just said, it sounds like ice ages happen with or without our mistakes. Jack, you know the chances of Sam. They're pretty slim, I know, because he's inside a stone building with a fire, and we've got this thin tent and a light. We're getting scared that the storm is dissipating over North America. Can you confirm? Affirmative. What? You're looking at f***ing Italy. That is 100% Europe, you space dicks. It's finally clearing. Earth is listening to the human's collective consciousness to stop depending on fossil fuels. 
It took mercy on us. We're over Europe right now. Exactly. Then why did you answer affirmative about North America? What will really blow your mind is that that's the ship from 2012. In 2004. It's a total mind f of derivativeness. Of course, they're all asleep. There has to be some suspense, I guess, for the dad that his son might be dead, despite the raging fire in the background. Also, why didn't Jack yell when he got in here? Like, oh, son, are you awake? And if you think schools are closed today, you've got another thing coming because this is some pussy-ass snow. Who is that? My father. Cheese overload. Consuming our planet's natural resources without consequence. We were wrong. Movie that has spent two hours scolding you for global warming wraps up with one final scolding about global warming. Also, why is the president giving this address on the Weather Channel? I get all the weather shit that happened, but not one single person in the U.S. would watch a presidential address on the Weather Channel. Only a few hours ago, I received word that a small group of people survived in New York City. Sorry, Mom. It was Donald Trump and the cast of The Apprentice. And Derek Jeter. So, worst case scenario. This unlikely couple got married shortly after this helicopter ride. They divorced five hours later. Wah, wah. Wait, how did these assholes survive? Did they all have fireplaces in these buildings? I don't see any chimneys on the rooftops. I bet their stories were better than this one, too. This unlikely couple got married shortly after. Jack is smiling because one day Sam will have kids with Laura, and he too will be a horrible dad. You've never seen the air so clear. The three megastorms must have wiped out all the human produced evil on the planet. I'm sorry, I jumped to conclusions. It was a jump to conclusions, Matt. You see, it would be this Matt. You gotta admit one thing. Can't beat the view. So what do you like about being up here? Look at here, Buddha. These people. And their cars and their exhaust. And everybody got AIDS and shit. I'm afraid that my condition has left me cold to your pleas of mercy. No! This thing looks just like a hurricane. Here I am. Rock you like a hurricane. And then one day he was shooting at some food, and up through the ground come a bubbling crude. Okay, so what do you need? Besides a miracle. Guns. Lots of guns. No! I'm not dead. I feel happy. I feel happy. You maniac! You blew it up! God damn you all to hell! Then let me ask you something. If she chooses me, would you try to kill me? That's an intriguing idea, but no. I couldn't hurt her like that. So you'd just turn her into a blood-sucking demon like you? I don't want that.